Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we're doing illustrative math, grade eight, unit three, lesson number two, practice problems. First problem here, the tortoise and the hare are having a race. After the hare runs 16 miles, the tortoise has only run four miles. Relationship between the distance X, the tortoise runs, in miles for every y miles the hare runs is y equals 4x. So y equals 4x. If x is 0, 4 times 0 is 0. If x is 1, if we substitute in a 1 for x, y is 4. 1 times 4 is 4. If the tortoise goes 2 miles, substitute in a 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 2, 8. If the hare runs 3 miles, 4 times 3 is 12. Tortoise runs four, four times four is 16. Five times four is 20. Ooh, that's not the best straight line I've ever drawn. Let's just pretend I'm good at that. Ooh, now we have a table. The table shows a proportional relationship between weight on a spring scale and the distance the spring has stretched. Complete the table. Twenty centimeters is twenty-eight newtons. What do we multiply twenty by to get twenty-eight? Well, how do we figure out what we multiplied by? We divide. 28 over 20 is good chance to use this guy. Come back. 28 over 20 is 1.4. 20 times 1.4 is 28. Ooh. 55 times 1.4 is 77. 1 times 1.4 is 1.4. Now let's go backwards. What do we multiply by 1.4 to get 140? Do we figure out what we multiplied by? We divide. That's 100. That was a pretty easy one. We didn't really need the calculator for that. Describe the scales you could use on the x and y axis of a coordinate grid that would show the all distances and weights in the table. So if we were going to graph this, what would we want to use? Well, we have to get up to 100 in the x direction, because that's the first column of the table. And we have to get up to 140 in the y column. So most graphs have enough spots for about 10. So if we count by 10 over here, 10, 20, 30, my writing's too big to get to 10. But if we count to 10s and get up to 100 here, that would cover our largest distance in centimeters. We have to get up to 140 this way, so let's count by 15s and go 15, 30, 45. 10 of those would get us up to 150.
And then our graph would probably look something about like that. So when we're graphing, if we want to make sure we're going to get up there, we need to figure out how far we have to go. If we have to go up to 100, maybe count by 10s. If we have to go to 140, count by 15s. What's next? Find a sequence of rotations, reflections, translations, and dilations showing that one figure is similar to the other. Be specific. Give the amount and direction of a translation, a line of reflection, the center and angle of a rotation, center and scale factor of a dilation, Okay, where do we want things to go? The first thing I notice is this big one with the longest side on the bottom points to the left. And the little one, D points to the left with that on the bottom. This one here with that on top, it's pointed to the left which means we're going to have to do a reflection because the handedness of these two figures is different. What line do we want to reflect over? Let's reflect over this line. Reflect over a d that's line a d now what are we going to want to do that puts it kind of like this not a perfect graph but D is still where D was. Now we're too big. How are we going to have to scale this? Well, from D to C, that's three units long one two three so we need to scale it down so dilate it with a scale factor of that's three units tall from d prime to c prime of that other one is one so we need a scale factor of one third Where's our call of duty? Center of dilation will be A. Let's do it right in the middle. Now from A to D is three units. Scale factor of one third, that will put it right here. Looking kind of like that. But D is right there, which means we're the right, we're oriented the right way, we're the right size. We just need to put it in the right place now. This is a circular grid, so we can do that with just a rotation. Which way do we want to rotate? We want to go counterclockwise because we want to go this way now how many lines do we want to rotate well D is on this line here we need to go one two three four five six seven eight we need to rotate eight of those lines Each one of those lines is 30 degrees. 
three times or thirty times eight. Three, six, nine, twelve. Nope, those lines can't be. How many lines have we got here? That's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. There are 24 lines, 360 divided by 24 is 15 degrees. So each one of those is 15 degrees. 15 times eight is 120 degrees. Rotate it 120 degrees. Let me just quickly remove my head Hey, look, you can see where I wrote 120 degrees. This is our sequence of transformations that will put that nice big BCDE onto the nice little tiny rotated reflected BCDE prime. Okay, what's next? Ooh, Andre's talking. Andre said, I found two figures that are congruent, so they can't be similar. Diego said, no, they are similar. The scale factor is one. Do you agree with either of them? If they are congruent, they have to be similar because they're still going to have all the same angles. Our definition of similar is, can we do a sequence of rotations, reflections, and dilations, putting one onto the other? Yes. If they're congruent, we can do it with just rotations, reflections, and translations, and not even use the dilation. So yes, that works. This has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Thanks for watching. See you next time.